everybody, welcome back to another uh, Dialing In series video for our Line 6 Helix. And this episode, I'm going to take a look at another uh, favorite tone of mine. I have lots of favorite tones I've had over the years. And this was actually requested by somebody last week. I can't remember who um, mentioned it, but it's, a, it's one that I've been meaning to get to as well, as I love uh, so many of the tones these guys uh, have on their albums. And it's the Stone Temple Pilots, or Dean DeLeo of the Stone Temple Pilots. So I chose um, to try uh, taking a crack at maybe getting close to his tone on the song Vaseline. I really didn't spend uh, any length of time really researching this. I know he's in the past used Vox AC 30 amps, I believe. Again, don't quote me on that. But I thought in listening to the tone on the song, I thought that might be a good starting point. And so I kind of went with that. Uh, and I'll show you what I have going on here in a second on Helix 4. But what a great song. Always love that aggressive tone he had on there. Um, I did a performance video for this. And what you're hearing on that is I was able to hunt down the backing tracks with no guitar, um, except the acoustic. There is an acoustic, believe it or not, doubling, or not doubling, but just playing some jangly chords. And I left that in so I didn't have to you know, re-record the acoustic guitar. Uh, so I left that in, but that's the only other guitar that you're hearing on there. I was able to get backing track with none of them. So what I did is, like the album, I doubled the main part, panned it hard left and right. So you're hearing two rhythm guitars panned hard left and right. You'll get to hear this solo guitar in this video. Um, so it's just kind of mixed like the original record. Uh, I didn't do any of the things with the special effects on the intro fading in or on the bridge. I know there's kind of like a, swirly wah type thing going on, but I, I kind of left that out. And I did the solo. The solo is just the uh, one individual track playing over top of those uh, two uh, layered rhythm tracks. Anyway, so really, I think it turned out pretty good. I was happy with it. Again, I'm not, I have to always make this disclaimer because so many folks keep saying, you know, oh, this is, wasn't right or that wasn't right. But I'm, I'm not professing that I've copied these tones. I'm trying to get something in the ballpark. There's too many variables to be able to copy them. I'm not using the same guitar, the same pickups, the same room and microphones that were used, you know? So it's just a matter of listening close, getting something that's close and going to be usable, very usable uh, for, for you know, most of the situations any of us will likely be in. So I hope you guys like this one. So let's go over to HX Edit and take a look. Uh, so as you'll see here, I have uh, six blocks and I combined the amp and cab into one block. And a lot of folks might ask why. <clears throat> and simple reason, I kind of was hoping that this would work on Stomp. You know, now that we have 2.8, we can just load these up. I don't have to do a particular Stomp version. Um, and as long as uh, it doesn't take too much DSP, it uh, should be fine. I don't see why this one would. So you Stomp users too, as well, should probably be able to do this. Don't quote me on it, I haven't tested it. But So what did I start with? Well, I mentioned that I was using the AC30 amp, well, uh, or the Essex A30 amp, as it's called in the Line 6 Helix. Uh, but let's take a look at the end. Nothing new here at the end. LA Studio Comp, 5.5 uh, peak reduction, gain of 5. I like that just to glue it all together. Uh, I did do some uh, pretty aggressive EQing on this though. Low cut at 100, high cut at 12 kilohertz, which is sort of my standard template settings that I start with. But at 150 hertz with a, a low Q of um, 6.5, very narrow band, I boosted that 5 dB. As there's a real beef in the bottom end of this, right? And at the same time, I went to 300 words with a very narrow Q of 6, and I dropped that down 6.2 dB. So they're kind of like cleaning up some mud but boosting some bottom uh, that, that I found worked really nicely. I just kept my standard room uh, uh, reverb on, a decay of 5 and a mix of 3, 30%. I, I really put this on not because I'm hearing uh, a large amount of reverb necessarily on this, but you know, when we're recording direct with any modeler, Helix included, it's going to be a very dry signal. And, you know, in normal real life, when we're miking an amp, we're usually going to pick up some level of room ambience. Uh, every room has a certain amount of ambience. Some are much more live, some are much more dead sounding, but they all do have some sort of ambience that somehow ends up getting picked up on the microphone. So it just gives it by adding a bit of room verb in, uh, it's not more of an effect reverb, but more just to give it a sense of space. That's why I put that in there. Um, I went with a low and high shelf uh, EQ as well. Didn't touch anything on the low uh, frequency, but I did go up to the high frequency and boost all the frequencies above 5 kilohertz by 4 dB. So let's look at the amp. I just went with the standard 212 silver bell cab that comes on the SXA30 when you pull it up. 
went with the 121 ribbon one inch back because I was trying to retain that fatness that you hear in this tone and it worked. Now, because of that though, uh, you know, that 121 is a dark mic and uh, it's very beefy, especially when you keep it at one inch back. And I also added in some low end over here. So that's why I really went and boosted all frequencies above 4 dB to get some of that. Uh, I'm sorry, 4 dB above 5 kilohertz to get some of that sizzle back. But if you notice on the amp controls, I basically pinned the drive to 10. I pinned the bass to 10. I have the treble up to 9.1, the presence up to 10, and the cut all the way back. So that's where I'm getting a lot of my bite from, is right from the amp itself. Channel volume was at 8, and the master is dimed as well, all the way up to 10. So really interesting settings. I, you know, I, I've played with the a SX A30 amp model before, and for certain things, it just is a beautiful amp model. It really does... Uh, what it's supposed to do. There are some things in it that I understand, you know, when it's pushed hard, some folks don't like sort of the, almost, I don't know if maybe it's graininess or grittiness, but it's that quality that personally I find helps it sit in the mix and actually gives some of these tones like you're gonna hear their character, right? Now I found that that wasn't giving me quite enough gain, but I didn't wanna just go slap any old distortion pedal in front of it, so I just went with the Kinky Boost. Set with the drive fairly low at 2.4, the boost on and the brightness on to get a little bit more of that, that, um, that top end sizzle in there so that it sat in the mix really well. You guys can go listen to it in the mix and tell me what you think. I thought it sat very nicely. It cut, but it wasn't abrasive in the mix. So, you know, a lot of times these tones, when we play them outside of the mix by themselves, they're going to sound edgy and, and high-endy, you know, and that's exactly what helps them to cut in the mix, you know. So sometimes we have to get past that idea that playing it in the room by ourselves, it's not maybe sounding the way we envision the sound in our head, but it's going to work live in a mix live or in a mix in the studio, right? So, so with this, it helped to push that amp into a little more saturation. Uh, and I got it kind of where I wanted it to be for, or, or at least close enough for what I was looking for here. So let's do this. Let's turn everything off, EQ wise, verb, EQ and compressor. And this is just the amp. So you hear that graininess here. I actually like that in there because it's really gonna help things to cut, right? Okay, so what we could do then, let's turn our compressor on at the end, see what that does. Okay. Our EQ with those changes I made, the low and high cut and the little boost, the narrow boosts and cut in the lows and low mids. Off. Cleans up some of the muddy low, but gave us some bottom still. Tain some of the bottom. Uh, put that room verb in. Okay, I'll put our high shelf in. And finally, I'll add the kinky boost in.
wherever that little squeal is. I got really lucky in the performance, but I nailed that one in there. I was pretty happy with that. <laughs> Sometimes those are a little tricky to find, eh? But anyways, this tone. Probably a lot of things in there a lot of people won't like. It's very grainy, right? But it really cuts in the mix and sounds good, I thought. So um, that's it, that's the tone. So all you Helix and hopefully Stomp users, this should load up fine, but don't uh, yell at me if it doesn't. Um, should work nicely. So, so that's it. Uh, hopefully that's a tone you guys can get some use out of and that you enjoy. Please go check out the performance video. <clears throat> it was a lot of fun to do. Uh, I kind of basically did mostly the whole song other than that sort of fading in intro uh, because of the, the weird effects on the guitars. I didn't have time to really look at uh, what was going on there. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy that. Check that out. Uh, if you like uh, the videos, please hit the, the, the like button. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. <clears throat> and uh, please share the video if you enjoyed it. And that helps me, uh, you know, the more support I get from these, it helps me to keep going and, and doing some more of this. This will also be up on Custom Tone uh, by the time this video comes out. And uh, you guys can download it, and I hope it works out for you, and I hope you really enjoy it. All right, so uh, thanks so much again, as always, for tuning in. I really do appreciate it, and I will be back soon with some more content, and uh, hopefully enjoyable content. All right, thanks, guys. Ciao for now.